Hi, this is the Textile Tutor and I'm Rachel Greenland. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple tote bag. A nice large tote bag because we always want to add fabric to our stash and if we have a large bag it means we can put more fabric in it. All you will need is a metre of fabric, the ability to stitch in a straight line and the ability to do a bit of zigzag and to iron. Very, very simple and you get to have fun at the end of it because it's an excuse to go shopping. I hope you enjoy it. Here I'm just going to place it right side together. This is calico, you can't really tell the difference. But if you have a patterned fabric, you want to have the pattern on the inside. And here I'm just popping some pins. You need to make sure that you pin them in the same direction. So the starting point for the sewing on this bag is the bottom point. So this is the top. This is the top opening. And then pin the other edge in the same direction coming up from the bottom. We're taking the main part of the bag and we're going to stitch the side seams which you've just pinned. So using a straight stitch and we're just going to do a couple of reverse stitches to secure the thread. And then we're just going to do 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimetre. And we're just going to neaten off these seams because if you look, we've got bits that are unravelling there and we don't really want the bag to unravel. Again, secure and go up the side. And a quick secure. Voila! So now we've got the seam, straight stitch, and we've got the neatening with the zigzag. Taking the bag, we're going to turn down the top approximately two and a half centimetres. And I'll just do side seams as well. You want to make sure that the side seams are pointing in the same direction because otherwise you'll get a lump. And there's nothing worse than a lumpy bag. Unless of course it's lumpy with money. And we want to turn it down again. So this one will be about three centimetres. And we press again. And we just want to pop a couple of pins to secure that in place. And if you look here, if you can see, the fabric has gathered up a little bit there. So what hopefully will happen is when you flatten it out like that, and just give it a little tug, and again flatten that seam, Good press, pin it, that'll be flat again, and the same on the other side. To make the handles we first need to press the shape, so folding the bottom half up to meet the other side, we want to just very gently Press that in half and then the next part you open it out and you've got the crease along the centre here which you're using as your guide and you want to fold 
the bottom edge up so that it meets the middle. Very carefully, without ironing your fingers, we take the top edge and fold that down to the centre. So if you find your centre crease, you fold the bottom up to the top, and you press it again. And before you move that on, just pop two or three pins to hold that in place so it doesn't slip. And we want to do a neat stitch, maybe a millimetre or two millimetres in from the edge. Taking the straps, we need to ensure that the stitched edge remains to the inside of the strap and that there's no twist in the strap when we're attaching it. We're going to measure in from the outside seam to measure in 8 centimetres and I'm just going to slide the strap to the inside. Just check that measurement again. So from there, eight centimeters in, and pin. I'm going to measure in eight centimeters from the other side. That needs to go up a little bit. There we go. So that's eight centimetres and that's pushed all the way up to the top and pinned. Starting at the side seam and taking care not to stitch through the other side of the bag. We are going to do a straight stitch all the way around. And I'm just doing a couple of stitches again to secure the thread. Make sure the handle is flat. And away we go. And if you look, I'm using the inside of the presser foot as a guide just to make sure that I keep everything nice and straight. Now if you look that handle's gone a little bit wonky so I just need to straighten it up so that it's perpendicular and I can take that pin out. If you're using more of a, a canvas material, be very careful when you get to the side seams because you're going to have quite a thickness of material and if there's a time that your needle is going to break, it'll be then. So just go through nice and steady and you can pick up speed on the other side. Now if you look, if you can see there, this has got a little bit looser than that, than the underside. So all I'm going to do is just apply a little bit of stretch to flatten that out and then I'm going to stitch so you don't get any puckering. Now we meet up at the side, a couple of reverse stitches and cut. So now we're taking the handle and we lift it up and we're going to pop a pin just to secure that in place. So 
keeping this nice and straight. We're going to do a line of stitching along, along, up, along, and then back up again. So you have the edge of the bag here, and we're stitching in again about a millimetre, maybe two millimetres, in from the edge. And we want a couple of stitches to secure. Then turn to go diagonally. And we'll turn to go back up again. I remember doing this puzzle as a child many, many times because I was convinced there was a way of not lifting the pen up off the paper to put across in a box. I was convinced. Kept trying. Took me years. Never achieved it. Okay, and I'm going to go back up along this line of stitching on the outer edge. And a back stitch. So that turn it around. And and you can see that the corners haven't come out all the way and they're still need a little bit of pushing through. So with a pair of scissors you want to very carefully and pick a pair of scissors where the ends are pointy but not sharp and I'll show you why. So you want to go inside the bag up into the corner and very carefully just work the fabric into a point like that, and the same on the other corner. If you push too hard, there's a danger that you'll push through the fabric and damage the bag. So you do need to be very mindful of that. And there you have one bag, ready to be pressed. And ready to go and buy some more fabric. So here it is, your finished bag, all ready to be filled with your shopping. And whether you like to go home fabric shopping or wool shopping, I don't know. I like a large bag because that means I can put in more wool and more fabric. You might prefer it for putting food in. So that's that size. You can also make different sizes. I've made a smaller one here with a little bit of a plique. Or you can have a smaller one again. So there you have it. Three bags. All from the same pattern. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.